Hi everyone, this is episode 523. It's Christina from Christina Creates. Um, I popped down to Tasmania for a couple of days, uh, which was absolutely beautiful. Even though it was autumn, it was stunning. It was just, we had sunshine every day. It was three degrees at night Celsius, which is pretty cold. But we did so much in the days we didn't mind. We were happy to just cozy up in bed and be warm. So um, I had a little thrift haul while I was there. I didn't get to go into a lot of op shops. We didn't have, everything was pretty condensed. We did lots of activities. I'm going to make a video because I've got quite a f lot of footage and some of some of Tasmania is just absolutely gorgeous. So we went on a boat up a gorge and, uh, you know, just absolutely lovely. That was at Launceston. And then we went up to Stanley, which is the top left where I have friends um, who were my neighbours that live there. So we went up there and this has got a great big volcanic sort of eruption and they call it the nut so i'll i'll make a video because honestly it, i can talk about it but it's just not the same without the visuals so we did catch a um, chairlift up the nut and had a big walk around the top so lots of nature lots of walks absolutely wonderful weather and i'm back so I had a little thrift haul and rather because I'm a bit late for Thrifty Thursday, I just thought I'd actually do a little catch up with some a project I'm also doing behind the scenes. So the beauty of going somewhere like Tasmania is that here in Melbourne, we're the city. Um, we don't always get a lot of really old, old stuff. I, I find it very hard to find quilts and things like that. Uh, unless you go up the country. So I was really pleased to find a couple of beautiful little hand-stitched doily. This one, just that. These beautiful, beautiful designs. Oh, it's just adorable. Even the outside. Just turn it over, that's probably better. A little bit of the cut work into into this white work. I do actually love white work. It's sort of a bit of a favorite of mine. Uh, they were all between two, one, two and four dollars. I was going to say I didn't think this looks so beautiful. I thought maybe it was machine, machine stitched, but you know what? I'm not sure what it is. I think it might be hand done. Anyway, this is going to be a lovely tie for a junk journal. Um, I've been looking for one of these for quite a while to put over my jug when I make some lemonade and I just thought this was really cute. It's got a lovely crocheted side, it's got the old beads that they used to put just to help it hang down and it's, a, it's gold, it's actually, it's like a gold sort of material and I am assuming it's made back in the day because I don't know if anyone makes these it looks old it feels old and it's frayed a bit and coming apart but I, I yes I have been looking for one of those for a while so I'm really happy about that just another little blue love my little blues and whites little crosses oh, just adorable just a little uh, dressing table or middle of the table piece. Uh, I always find it interesting that they would have thrown it out just for this one little stain. But look, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Look at the little rose detail. I think it's roses or some sort of flower. And this is just beautiful. Oh, I just love it. The edges the edging and that's just going to be beautiful on the on the front cover of a book or just as part of a stitch project in fact I just had an idea I'll put that over there um, this one is a napkin I would assume and I've had some in this sort of design before with the you know the little tiny applique and this green border and it's a beautiful, beautiful linen. I'm just really loving that. But that might be going somewhere special to a friend. 
and now I got a whole heap of tatting. Now I, I and until I did um, Anne Brooks 52 tags, I didn't ever experience tatting. I didn't quite know what it was. And then once you get to make some and realize, oh my goodness, it's so detailed and fine. But look at this. I've got three tatting pieces. I'm, I'm a bit excited about this, actually, <laughs> because this is a lot of tatting, whether it's cut up and used or whether I, whether I can. I might not even be able to, but look at that. Isn't, isn't that design beautiful? And these little loopy bits and the little meeting in the middle that like little strawberries almost. Um, and this is quite big and it's got this little beautiful detail here and the beautiful detail there. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Once again, there's just a tiny little stain, which is why someone threw it out. I don't get it, but that's all right. That's because then we can get them. This is another one, quite large. I mean, look at that. How much tatting is in this? <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> Beautiful circular bits in the middle, like flowers. These gorgeous edges, and the little look at these, aren't they? There are, and it's also. I mean, I know it probably just needs a bit of an iron, get it flat, but it's just. I don't think I could make anything that perfect. It's so even. <laughs> <laughs> How do people do it? I don't know. It's amazing. Anyway, that is the second piece of tatting. And then the third bit of tatting is a thicker one. I don't know which way. Maybe this way up. Um, nice because it's just similar, but it's so different because look at it. It's just gorgeous. And I'm thinking... This is also giving me another idea. So let me just finish going through this little haul of goodies. I'll get that off later. Uh, beautiful. Right, let me put that with that. Uh, I didn't quite know what this was, <laughs> but I got it. Um, I got it because I really liked the bird and I do want to do some works with birds, but it's a bag. It's like a little handmade bag, but this is also like a little pocket here and a little pocket here. And there's some really good material in it. I think I mainly got it for the material, but it was after that I realized it's kind of like a drawstring. And I think uh, what I was saying about my last bag that I made that I felt that when it's really thick, it's difficult with the drawstring. Um, although I don't have that problem, but this one, I think, I think it could be something that you use for sewing things, but it's interesting. And it's, I, I, I think it's, it looks to me like it's made from a tablecloth. So I'm a bit undecided about it. It doesn't have sentimental value for me because it wasn't made by a family member. But I, I actually think I'm really liking the material and the flowers and the birds so much that I probably am going to disassemble it. And I've already started. Right, so I'm making a little pile of green things. And I think if you're watching this, you know who you are, who's getting the green things. <laughs> um, it's been sewn, not rather than hand stitched. Even the reds kind of feels like it was a tea towel or something. So I'll be getting the um picker to that. Let's have a, just have a quick squeeze at how it's probably been made. It's probably been made by folding it in a certain way. So this comes all the way across and all the way across. So if I undo this, it's probably going to be like the points of a tablecloth. And then this one underneath is going to be similar points of a tablecloth. Okay, so that's quite a bit of unpicking, but it's okay. Happy to do that. 
uh, saw this little adorable pattern. I don't actually want to. I, I'm actually thinking maybe I might make one of the little coats, but it's just so nice. The old, old, old paper. I'm just seeing if it's, yeah, it's been cut out, so it has been used. The tissue paper. It's almost like a glassine. Oh, just, just adorable. But I love the packet, you know, I just love these little packets. And I got my flatmate to look because I didn't have my glasses on at the time. Um, 1953. So there you go. How adorable is it? And I just sometimes wish they didn't put labels on because sometimes you can ruin it getting the label off. Yeah, it's looked a little bit unfortunately but there you go so that was my little very short uh one little visit to an op shop it's it is very difficult when you're going around if, if you don't want to spend all day in the op shops well i don't know that my partner would have appreciated that anyway but he um he did enjoy himself he nearly didn't go because he as a bit of work but uh, that would have been a bit silly of him so anyway I'm going to over this next week be doing um, a project for Anne Brooks Art project she's got um, an exhibition on but she's called for people to do little 10 centimeter 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter squares to post to be a part of the project and the exhibition um, to do with circles you'll if you go and have a look at her wobble gob her latest wobble gob and you'll see um, circles neutral no color whatsoever and it's about um, soulful tribe community and that's something I think Think about quite a bit this year this is one of my things is to get out more and meet more people and have chats more about stitching and art and craft and you know meet meet my peers as we as I did when I went to Rachel and Sarah's workshop up at the green door um, so I thought this is a good way to participate so for me my life journey I've, I've thought about this a little bit now no color so the, even though this is a bit from one of deb's quilts from deb's dollhouse dollhouse vintage um i thought that this is even though this is vintage and i'm hoping that this isn't too much color it's still neutral to me i've got all whites and i've got some of the nettle i've decided that this is my thought. It's a kind of a the three stages of my life sort of thing. I mean, we can look at it as women, as the ages of, you know, the child, the adult, the crone. But also I have three distinct phases in my life. And this is sort of a... Uh, I think I'll probably put French knots in the middle or somehow I might cut it. I don't know. But this with the hole in the middle is representing I have a from before the age of 24. I've had a lot of trauma. And so this is representing like my start to life in this life. If you believe in more than one life, if you don't, doesn't matter. Um, this is representing that phase. So it's kind of empty you know there's this the shock of trauma can leave you feeling very disconnected from people disconnected from the world not a part of the world different than everyone else there's many layers don't need to go into it but there are many layers to how we're affected by trauma then i thought i love the pattern of this it's very rich it's still a little bit not 100% me, it's still just white, it's just a, um, a get on with life phase and I kind of love my children but it's still a phase of 
giving, a phase of being part of this soulful journey of you having your children and you're enjoying them and this middle section, you know, the middle section. Now I'm in my 60s, um, I am going to represent that. I haven't thought any more about what I'm doing to put these all down, but I'm going to represent this as my third age where there's a lot more me, you know, I'm able to not do what anyone else tells me, I'm able to do stitching and creative stuff and enjoy the visual. So I've added this bit of quilt from Deb as a sort of a delineation from this cold past, you know, in, in getting into, oh, I, I mean, my children warmed my life up a lot and in, incredibly, but getting into this lush kind of full of experience and I'm an elder, so I've got more worldly experience. Um, so I, I, this is as far as I've got with this for Anne and when I was looking at my threads to get out because neutral, um, I found my nettle thread, which I, I really, you can't thread it through. It's really hard to thread. You can't sew it like a sewing. But I thought, oh, nettle's perfect. It's like this start, you know, to incorporate it around the edge. I'll couch it on or something as just a reminder that this in life, you know, you can get stung. The nettles are stinging and obviously later when you get a bit more tempered and um, have more experience and learn how to deal with your trauma, nettle can also represent uh, something that's healing. So, you know, nettle tea is very nourishing and very good for you. So uh, this is where I'm up to with this. This is a start. And when I just was looking at these, I was thinking maybe these can somehow become part of it down here. Maybe this might work a bit better. The colour might work a bit better. Somehow. Because it's going to get richer because my life is getting richer. So I also, just one more thing. Um, I just grabbed one of my boxes that has got some more neutral kind of colors, whites, creams. Um, I've got this beautiful, it's cotton slub it's called. It might be a bit yellow. I think I'm, I probably should send Anne, and that's more nettle, Anne a little note and just ask, am I getting too far off the beaten track with cotton slub, which is a bit more yellow? Um, yeah, whites. Oh, none of the others will work, but certainly these are what I would consider neutrals. So that's my little behind the pro scenes projects. Um, I'll be back with, oh, I've got, what have I got? I've got next week will be the next episode of Mermaid May, Mermaid, and I'll do the next part of that video. And I also will be starting with the Roxy's May edition of a box as well and seeing what, I have a couple of ideas, just none of them are cemented yet got distracted by this because this needs to be done and posted to Anne within the next week. So this is my focus for this moment. So there you go. Um, that's it. That's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed seeing those some of those yummy lovelies and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.